So the world of multiple myeloma has considerably changed over the last several years, and in particular in early relapse. Uh, we have more options than we've ever had before. And so when I think of early relapse and multiple myeloma, I really think of a strategy as opposed to a simple algorithm. Uh, we don't just simply say, this is what I get first line, this is what I get second line, this is what I get third line. We now have this opportunity to mix and match of all the different classes that we have in multiple myeloma and the newest options that we have. Firstly, I think it's important to note that we have some basic principles of how we approach uh, this method of, of treating early relapse, which is that we like to leverage different mechanisms of action together, that we don't continue what someone has already been on from maintenance. So with so many patients having been on lenalidomide maintenance, we really don't continue it. We really try to discontinue it and now come with that new mechanism of action. We recognize the importance of a deep response, and we respect the difference between high-risk and standard-risk myeloma. It may not make an immediate difference in the selection, but it may make a difference in terms of how long someone's on the therapy and how intensely they are on it. And then lastly, a very important principle to me is always to listen to our patients and to balance that efficacy and toxicity. And as I've noted, myeloma has changed so much that now we have a huge spectrum of opportunity. Historically, we had three classes of drugs in myeloma, immunomodulatory drugs, proteasome inhibitors, and monoclonal antibodies. But now we have really a fourth major class of drugs, the XPO1 inhibitors exhibited in cell and XOR. And so when I look to treat my patients with early relapse in myeloma, I think of different combinations that I use within all of those. If patient in particular has not had a monoclonal antibody, we classically introduce uh, a monoclonal antibody such as daratumumab or isatuximab with a partner drug like pomalidomide or carfilzomib in that early relapse setting. That being said, many of our patients now are on monoclonal antibodies in their first line of therapy and are often even resistant to it by the time they get to that second line. And so it's important to look at new combinations. So I often use cell and XOR now as that fourth class, along with one of those drugs from those other classes, like adding cell and XOR with carfilzomib or with bortezomib adding selenexor to pomalidomide uh, as an option uh, to treat my patient with early relapse. Then, of course, the cascade will come thereafter as to how we treat uh, patients thereafter. Every agent we use in myeloma has had its own evolution, meaning that with time, we seek to increase its efficacy and reduce its toxicity by using it very carefully with the right supportive care. We've seen this with proteasome inhibitors, with immunomodulatory drugs, even with monoclonal antibodies reducing infusional reactions. Now with XPO1 inhibitors, in particular cell and XOR, we've learned that it is very important to choose the appropriate dose off the start. I typically start with 60 or 80 milligrams once weekly to use it with two antiemetics, both a 5-HT3 antagonist and a olanzapine. And to give that the day prior, the day of, and the day after every dose of cell and extra for that first month, and to monitor patients carefully through that first month, knowing that the first month can be the most challenging with regards to the GI side effects. Thereafter, in subsequent months, it tends to be much easier to manage, and we can dose reduce with time. So I think these principles will help us not only incorporate different mechanisms of action, but use them carefully and meticulously so that patients can stay on these agents and benefit from them. And then uh, I think it's important as I come to an end to note that we now have agents and approaches that have typically been in very late line that we're now bringing forward. Very recently, we in the US have had the opportunity to introduce CAR T cell therapy as early as first relapse. We've typically prioritized that for those patients that have the highest risk disease but I think we all know with time that we'll bring bispecifics as well and even a next wave of CAR-T and bispecifics to the early line. So in summary, early relapse in myeloma has significantly changed. We now want to leverage different multiple uh, mechanisms of action, introduce now a new class of agent and XPO1 inhibitors, and indeed employ these immune therapies that we've historically used later line into earlier line therapy for our patients.